How is it possible that in 1997, someone could be sentenced to death because they're black? Like Dr. King said, you need to judge people by the content of their character. So many years after the Civil Rights Bill, racism is still a very real part of our society. Sometimes the government makes mistakes, but the very least we can do is try to correct it. It is legally unconstitutional. No one can be sentenced to death based on their race. In 1997, Dwayne Buck was convicted of killing Deborah Gardner and Kenneth Butler and critically wounding his stepsister, Phyllis Taylor. Buck's lawyers are asking the justices to set aside his, his death sentence because the jury in his case was told he was more dangerous to society because he was black. There is no question, though, of Buck's guilt. The only issue here is whether or not he's going to live or die. During his capital punishment trial, a psychologist by the name of Dr. Walter Quijano said that black people have a higher rate of violent behavior. And that was used as a key piece of testimony that ultimately led to the jury to sentence Buck to death over life in prison. Dr. Quijano testified at trial? Yes. You do. Did you, did you remember that specific question when he talked about you being more likely to be a danger because you're black? Yeah, I mean, it, it, out, of, out of all the things, that stood out because it's like, he basically said, because you're black, you, you need to die, right? And I, I felt that was strange because my lawyer didn't say nothing, nobody else, you know, I think it's hard to underestimate how powerful that testimony is. You have a psychologist, an expert in the field, testifying that the person who was on trial was going to be dangerous in the future. Um, this was a case that did not have an enormous amount of evidence speaking to the question of future dangerousness. Mr. Buck did not have prior convictions uh, for violence. So having this expert in the field say that because of his race, he was going to be dangerous in the future, it clearly had a very profound impact on the jury. It is so inflammatory that it is beyond reason to me to believe that it did not influence at least some of the jurors. So it does nothing but appeal to bias that if there's a bias lurking within someone, uh, this kind of evidence is meant to get that out. If any one of those jurors made a decision that Mr. Buck's life should be taken as a result of the fact that he was born black, then he didn't get a fair trial. The racial bias in Dwayne's case is a product of Houston's not so distant past. I came to Houston in 1955, the same year that Rosa Parks uh, got on the bus in Montgomery. Uh, and when I came, uh, Houston uh, had complete full segregation, uh, just like Mississippi or, or Alabama or Georgia. And I think that what I saw in Houston at that time uh, made me fully aware that this was not a good place to rear children. We were in the store one day and I saw these two water fountains side by side and one said colored and one said white and I pushed both buttons, four-year-old kid. The water was clear in both of them. I couldn't figure that out, so I asked her, what was the difference between the white water and the colored water? And she grabbed me by my hand so tight and jerked me out of that store, I can still feel it now. There's been a long history of racial bias uh, in Harris County and uh, old habits die hard. There are a lot of people who are still fighting the Civil War. While things have improved a great deal, uh, at the same time, racism has taken simply a, a different turn. At the time of Dwayne Buck's trial, Harris County prosecutors were three times more likely to seek the death penalty for African-American defendants than for similar white defendants. 
During the same period, Harris County juries were twice as likely to sentence African-American defendants to death than similar white defendants. Over the last five years, nearly 75% of all death sentences in Texas have been imposed on people of color. In uh, 2000, then Attorney General John Cornyn reviewed um, a number of cases in which Dr. Quijano had testified. And what he found was there were six cases in which Dr. Quijano's testimony violated the Constitution. Even though he's a legitimate and honest conservative, uh, this was something that just indicated to him was just fundamentally wrong, and he didn't want to see it uh, tolerated. It is virtually unprecedented for a state official to confess error in a capital case. And in, in this situation, he confessed error in six capital cases. And so he promised those individuals that they would all receive resentencing hearings, that he wouldn't contest them in federal court. The other five individuals who are identified besides Mr. Buck received new sentencing hearings, and Mr. Buck did not. Mr. Buck's right to equal protection was violated by the state of Texas making a promise to six death sentence prisoners keeping its promise as to five and singling Mr. Buck out to be executed, notwithstanding the fact that there is no meaningful distinction between him and the other five offenders to whom the state of Texas promised new fair sentencings. Dr. Quijano's prediction of future dangerousness could not have been further from the truth. Dwayne Buck has been a model prisoner. Mr. Buck is an incredible individual. He is different than any other client I've met on death row. His faith and his spirit are infectious and inspiring. And now that he's on death row and has had time to reflect on his crime, he's incredibly sad and remorseful about what, what he's done. And he's dedicated himself to God and to preaching to those other inmates on death row who are looking for guidance. And even him being on death row for 15 years, he never had one incident with anyone. He never got rolled up for anything. And that's remarkable to say the conditions that he's in right now. And for 15 years to be like that, he never, the warden always said, we're going to really miss Buck around here. He said, he's just the light of this unit. He said, he encouraged everybody. He never have nothing negative. It's always positive. He's a blessing to this place. And now to a controversial court case. Former Governor Mark White is speaking out in defense of a convicted killer on death row. Governor Mark White, who held office during the executions of 19 convicted felons, believes one man on death row needs more time to live. Convicted murderer Dwayne Buck. It's unfair to have someone on death row if they're not supposed to be there. This is getting in front of the problem. Don't wait till it's too late. My name is Linda Geffen. I am a senior assistant county attorney in Harris County, Texas. Back in 1997, I was second chair prosecutor on the Dwayne Buck case. I've never taken a stand in favor of an appeal on any other case, and I've tried over 100 cases. This case stands out because life doesn't give you very many opportunities to stand up and correct a wrong. And when you're given that opportunity, you should seize it, make the most of it, and try to make it right. I mean, it, it was to, for them to forgive you, you know. It's uh, you know, been really painful for me over the years to uh, you know, uh, think about what had happened. Phyllis Taylor, Wayne's stepsister, was critically wounded during the attack. Each time that I visit him, the first thing he says is, how you doing? Please forgive me for the pain that I have caused you. 
when we apply the death penalty and we seek criminal sentences, we have to do so in a colorblind manner. And allowing this kind of racial testimony in any capital sentence proceeding undermines the entire justice process. While we had hoped that we were considered first-class citizens, uh, we could have governors, mayors, heads of corporations, even a president, that we have not yet arrived there. The least the system ought to do, the criminal justice system in Texas, second largest state in the country, how difficult would it be to just give Mr. Buck a new sentencing uh, hearing? We can't put Mr. Buck to death. The state of Texas can't put Mr. Buck to the ultimate punishment without having a fair, just, colorblind sentencing hearing. Join me and more than 100 civil rights leaders, clergy, former prosecutors, and judges in calling for a new and fair sentencing hearing for Dwayne Buck. Tell Texas to keep its promise.